Hi, uh, I am Omar Gutierrez. Um, I want to talk about some things about for non-parametric bias. Um, most of the things I will say are based on some tutorial from this researcher, Samuel Gersman. Um, actually, I won't tell you too many things. We will recap uh, somewhat uh, uh, the definition for a model in a nutshell. <laughs> Um, I will show the most simple example for non-parametric bias that, I, that is clustering. Uh, I will show you how we usually do uh, the clustering and the alternative approach that is the non-parametric model. And, well, I will say something at the end. Um, I will try to say some jokes. <laughs> I hope you understand. Uh, so, okay. Uh, uh, what we do in machine learning is, uh, how can I say, uh, not only, but uh, the main idea is to add, modify the values or for some parameters in some training process. Um, well, this uh, is almost the default uh, approach in machine learning. So it's not common to hear parametric uh, models, but almost all models that we are using right now are parametric. But uh, there are uh, another group of uh, machine learning models that are non-parametric. And for me, uh, they are very interesting. Um, I think we need to discuss the idea. So uh, just to remember that in linear regression, our parameters are, well, our beta values. So we can move a line in the plane or uh, a hyperplane. Um, well, in neural networks, it's almost the same. But, oh, well, this is a perceptron. <laughs> I confused the image. Uh, but it's the same. We modify the ways, um, etc. Also, I don't know, hidden Markov models. We have some kind of ways that are the hidden values, and we modify them. So then I think you know <laughs> so much about machine learning. Uh, so I want to ask you something. Oh. Uh, for you, uh, which one is the best model? I uh, think on the blue line as, uh, I don't know, a kind of time series, and um, the red line, the model. So for you, uh, how many of you think that the model A is the best one? And um, how many of you think that the model B is the best one? Okay. Uh, well, I did a trap <laughs> because I didn't show you the complete data. And well, in the last step, we can see that the line blue dropped down dramatically. So in this case, uh, the best model is uh, the red line. I, I'm not sorry, <laughs> the one in the, the letter B. Uh, so then it's not so easy, like just modify parameters in a training process. Uh, data science sometimes is rather than a science, it's an art. So uh, let's think, uh, I don't know, there is someone from GIS here. Those guys are doing stock uh, marketing. So imagine that uh, we are buying stocks, but in some moment you need to stop buy it because it could be risky. So the model in 
the side B is uh, a good model in that kind of uh, s scenario. Uh, but maybe you are asking <laughs> why this name, like Bertrand Russell's inductivist turkey. Do you know the history? Okay, <laughs> so it's very funny because imagine that one turkey that is uh, smart, this turkey uh, is, it has this philosophy, inductivist, so he made conclusions, and then each morning he receives uh, f uh, food from his owner. Um, then he started to think, oh, okay, I'm receiving food at night in the morning, the rainy days, sunny days, weekends. So he uh, started to conclude uh, that he will receive food for uh, a lot of time. But that is not the case uh, in Christmas Day because the next day uh, the owner will cut the trot for this turkey. So this model is very good <laughs> in that scenario. And I like that history for, from Bertrand Russell. So I think that you know this formula, of course, the Bayes rule. Um, well, I will recap, I will repeat what uh, it does mean, uh, well, let's start with the blue term. That is our prior knowledge. Imagine that as the conclusions that our, the Turkey is getting every day. So, but this uh, reality, it will change. Um, it will change uh, because of uh, the observations, let's think in D as the data set, I don't know, or yeah, the observations, given the, our hypothesis or our parameter. And at the end, uh, we will have uh, a new reasoning that is called the posteriori value, that one in red, in red color. Uh, so, well, we define already what a model is. So now we are talking about uh, Bayesian reasoning that um, is old, I think, <laughs> very old, but this is still very useful and very popular. Uh, so the idea is that, well, this uh, was before the machine learning revolution and the data science revolution. So the idea is that manipulating probabilities, we can make inference. So uh, let's see this other formula. Uh, we want to get the maximum argument in the Bayes formula. So this is called maximum a posteriori. Um, for example, from the step two to the step three, do you know why we delete the, the, this term? You know, here is present, but not here. Can you tell me? Because there are like 20 formulas like this. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, well, we can see that this term is uh, not affecting the other one, so we delete it. And also, uh, if we have at all not prior knowledge, we can say that uh, the probability of the uh, of our hypothesis of our our hypothesis is the same. So also we can delete it. And we finish with this uh, maximum likelihood estimation. That is uh, a very important formula and is not so hard. So we will see maximum likelihood estimation in almost every algorithm. If you want to prove that your algorithm is correct, just try to uh, match with this maximum likelihood estimation. And I will come back later. Uh, oh, well, I just uh, want to mention that there is a very nice paper where 
uh, the paper uh, studied the history of this maximum likelihood estimation. So it's nice, you know, see the progress. Uh, I don't remember the, <laughs> the title, but you can Google if you are interested. So now we know uh, more about some Bayesian reasoning. And we know that it's present in many algorithms, machine learning algorithms. Uh, so let's think on some problems with data. Uh, the data is always evolving. So for example, imagine Wikipedia, the first years. Uh, I don't know how many articles or the topic of the articles, but let's say that they were just biology and chemistry. And then the next years, the, uh, Wikipedia start to have articles in sports or biographies from artists. So the data was evolving. The same with the species in the planet. Every week or every few days, the biologists are discovering new species. So they need to modify somewhat the taxonomy sometimes. Um, then it's evolving the data. And um, let's think in the social networks, they are uh, evolving every second. For example, the hashtags on Twitter. Uh, well, uh, uh, how we usually address the problem, for example, clustering. Uh, there is a kind of common way to do it, uh, one classic approach. So let's say that we want to use Max Gaussian mixture models. Um, let's think in the Gaussian mixture as something that is proven but uh, the maximum likelihood. So the Gaussian mixture models uh, is uh, Equivalent, not equivalent, but uh, it complains with the, not complains, oh, sorry. It fits with the maximum likelihood. It, this is uh, a claim without proof. <laughs> I won't prove. Uh, but yeah, uh, then in the Gaussian mixture model, there is a bias reasoning. So, Yeah, uh, we can do some clustering, maybe with uh, Gaussian mi mixture. Uh, but uh, then some question arise, like how many clusters do we need if uh, my data is evolving? And then we usually create uh, too many kernels and then do a comparison. I don't know, maybe with Bayesian information criterion or silhouette. Uh, there are a lot of metrics. And in this case, uh, the best clustering was uh, five uh, kernels. I don't know if you can see. So this one, yeah, it seems a good clustering, but actually also number three. So that is what we usually do. But let's think then uh, in another approach. So we have seen the parametric approach, but let's think in a non-parametric approach. And non-parametric uh, can be confused, like there is no parameters at all, but actually the number of parameters is infinite. Uh, but also there is a bad assumption about that. Uh, so the idea is that we have uh, empty clusters, uh, infinite empty clusters, and we will start to fit them with our data. So in this way, we can solve that problem if our models uh, can be adapted to the complexity of our data. 
itself. And well, let's see this diagram. So we have non the Bayesian models. Some of them are non-parametric. And those names are funny, <laughs> like, uh, you know, Chinese restaurant and Indian buffet. I don't know, uh, sometimes the science is funny. Um, you know, I am from Mexico. I am thinking that if I study enough some the direct process, I can conclude uh, another similar model. I don't know, the Mexican taqueria process, maybe. So these uh, models are known as direct process. And I will explain the Chinese restaurant process because for me it's very intuitive. So imagine that we are in a Chinese restaurant and usually the Chinese restaurants in California, I think, they are huge. So one scientist discovered that and he said, oh wow, the Chinese restaurants are huge so you can go there and if the restaurant is empty, you can choose any table. And then the second customer will go and will choose another table or the same one with some probability. And then at the end, uh, we realize that uh, what is happening when a lot of customers are going to the restaurants is a kind of clustering, and each table is one cluster. And well, that's pretty cool. So that is the idea of the model, the Chinese restaurant process, one model that is evolving. Uh, so this is the clustering for uh, the previous uh, data we saw, but uh, with uh, the infinite, infinite Gaussian mixture model that is uh, some uh, daily process. So, and we can do everything the, you can do with a parametric model, for example, digit recognition or topic modeling. And well, actually, I am in the conclusion part. So let's recap the, in the traditional approach. Oh, sorry, I uh, mixed some uh, letters instead of theta, the listing in probability of H. Well, the number of uh, parameters are fixed. Um, we have some distribution over those parameters. Um, in the other case, the non-parametric models, we assume that we have infinite number of clusters. Um, our data can be uh, adapted to, or no, uh, our model can be adapted to this data. So there are some libraries in Python, uh, of course, Scalarn, Scalarn, oh, sorry. Uh, but they, they only have like two or three or one, uh, one or two uh, daily uh, algorithms. And the best one, in my opinion, because it's more like in the research stuff, is this one, data microscopes, but uh, I don't like it so much because they only are available on Conda and not in the official Python repository. Mm, but actually, yeah, they are the best uh, library. They have the best library. So uh, if we want to know more about this, we, um, we can study uh, what the beta distribution is. Uh, in a nutshell, the beta distribution is just uh, 
a probability of probabilities. And then we have the direct distribution that is uh, some generalization from beta distribution. Then that means that is a distribution of distributions. And finally, the direct process. Um, well, if you also want to um, uh, read more about it, uh, well, uh, my favorite book in machine learning is the one written by Tom Mitchell. And this tutorial is really nice. And uh, the library I mentioned, they have also very nice tutorials. Um, you can check it. And well, that's all. <laughs> Grazie. So, have your questions? Okay. Can you use the microphone and speak directly to him? Okay. So, you mentioned the Gaussian uh, mixture model. Is that considered a Bayesian model then as well? Maybe not uh, exactly, but maybe the Bayesian model is not as, no, the Gaussian mixture model. It's not strictly a Bayesian model, but uh, the algorithm that we use uh, to do the clustering is uh, expectation maximum, and this one use uh, the maximum likelihood. So the maximum likelihood is uh, derived from the Bayesian the Bayes rule. So yeah, so what we can say that uh, is part of a Bayesian reasoning, Bayesian model. And actually there is a, some discussion, like most of what we know as Bayesian models, they are not exactly Bayesian models, but just statistical learning. And then let's think in that if we use calculus and we say for everything that we are doing uh, things from Newton, and it's not exactly like that. Well, Newton was important in calculus, but uh, there are other mathematicians that also put uh, things in that, over that. So it's almost the same with uh, bias things, Bayesian things. Um, sometimes it's not exactly Bayesian, but it has uh, behind this bias rule. Okay, more questions? So we have plenty of time, have your questions. <laughs> okay, seems, oh, it's there some, someone again, oh, great. Yeah, I can ask a second question maybe. Uh, so I'm just trying to understand this Bayesian models. Is it a category of models, or is it a um, like a way of of using different other models? Because I mean, I, I know the name Gaussian mixture model, and I'm trying to understand Bayesian models. Is it also a category of other models, or is it a way of using a model? Yeah, maybe, yeah, there are some models that are strictly Bayesian. For example, uh, let's say it's Bayesian networks. We have uh, strictly uh, some two probabilities that are uh, in not independent, that depend on, they are, the, the, they depend on each, each other. So, we can say that uh, Bayesian networks are strictly uh, a Bayesian model. And there are other ones I think we can think on a Bayesian model or uh, hidden Markov models because, yeah, we have some uh, nodes and 
they have a dependency, uh, uh, and this dependency is a probability. Uh, but uh, exactly, uh, we can then discard uh, Gaussian mixture model as a Bayesian model. But still, uh, as I said, it has some Bayesian things inside. <laughs> Very deep. I don't know if it was a good answer. Okay. So well, maybe I can finish. Like you know, uh, I am more like software developer, but I am not doing software development anymore because it's kind of boring. <laughs> so then I decided to do a master in computer science. Um, I'm doing a lot of statistics now. But I am also not uh, an statistician. So as Bertrand Russell said, I am not a philosopher. I am not a mathematician either. So I am a centaur. <laughs> so it's the same. <laughs> OK, last question. I don't see hands up. So thanks again to Omar. <laughs>